So if you're looking for a phone under $500 or just a more affordable phone, these two phones might be at the top of your list. Well, if you're in the United States, at least. Both phones start at $449, but I've already seen the A53 5G go on sale for crazy low prices. I've seen as low as $150. Obviously, it depends on where you get it from and with which carrier. <laughs> The Pixel is going to be slightly smaller and weighs in at 178 grams. The Galaxy weighs in at 189 grams. You get a 6.1 inch OLED screen on the Pixel with 60 hertz refresh rate and then a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display with 120 hertz refresh rate on the Galaxy A53 5G. Both have 1080 by 2400 resolution. You can watch upscaled 4K or 2160p resolution, YouTube videos on both phones. You can also watch full HD playback resolution on apps like Netflix for both phones as well. To me, the overall screen brightness is about the same on these two. They're both nice and bright, have decent viewing angles, and putting them right next to each other, I feel like they're really close in color, contrast, and just overall screen quality. I feel like most people are gonna be happy with either one when it comes to screen quality, and both look really nice when watching shows movies, playing games, reading, or just browsing online. You also get a fingerprint scanner built into the screen, so it's going to be somewhat similar. Both could unlock a little bit faster in my opinion. The locations are slightly different, with the scanner being higher up on the Pixel, but both are going to get the job done and appear to be fairly reliable for the most part. A slight issue with the Pixel 6a, the fingerprint scanner actually lets you unlock with unregistered fingerprints. Hopefully that'll be fixed soon with a software update. The battery sizes are a little different as well. You get a larger 5,000 milliamp hour battery in the A53. So you're gonna get about the same battery life. During my battery drain test, these two phones lasted what seemed like forever. Both lasted over 12 hours at 100% screen brightness. So if you're wanting a phone with really good battery life, these two are some really good options. You're not gonna get wireless charging with either one, but you do get fast charging. 25 watt for the Galaxy phone, 18 watts for the pixel. Now when it comes to the software, in my opinion, these two are leading the way when it comes to Android software, not only in software updates with three years for the Pixel, four years for the Galaxy phone, and then even longer with security updates, both pack in a lot of features and just make it feel like you're getting your money's worth. They're both currently on Android 12, and if you're one of those people who feel like you need to be on the newest version of Android as soon as it comes out, these two should be pretty good options. In case you're wondering, you're not going to get Samsung Samsung DeX on the Galaxy phone. You only get that on the more expensive S versions. So who does Android software better, Samsung or Google? For me, I probably prefer Google just a tad more, but really I like what both companies are doing and you can't go wrong with either one. Tons of features, plus you can customize things to make them just how you like for the most part. You get six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage. You can expand the storage up to one terabyte with a micro SD card, only in the Galaxy phone though. You get the new Tensor processor by Google in the Pixel phone, Exynos 1280, and the Galaxy A53 5G. So when it comes to performance, you get a little bit higher Geekbench scores on the Pixel 6a, 1050 versus 740, single core score on the Galaxy phone, 2833 versus 1887, multi-core score, but just moving around the software, multitasking, pretty much anything you'll be doing performance-wise, it's not really going to be a huge difference. Even though the Pixel phone appears to be more powerful, in my experience, it doesn't really feel like a huge difference. Now games are going to load or open a little bit faster on the Pixel phone. You're also going to get HD graphics, high frame rates on games like PUBG Mobile on the Pixel, a little lower on the Galaxy phone at balanced graphics, medium frame rates. And then same thing with Apex Legends Mobile, a little bit higher settings for the Pixel. I think both phones are pretty good options for gaming, especially for the price. But if you want the phone with a little better graphics, a little better performance, you're going to want to go with the Pixel 6a. 
And then you're not gonna get a headphone jack on either of these two. Apparently you only get that with super cheap phones nowadays. As far as speakers go, you get one speaker at the bottom, one by the earpiece on both phones. And then you're only gonna get Dolby Atmos with the Galaxy phone. So you would think just on paper, Samsung's probably gonna sound better. But to me, it's definitely too close to call. Both sound nice and loud. I'd probably call this one a tie. Here's a quick sample of each just to see what you think. Both of these phones are pretty good when it comes to cameras. You get four cameras on the back of the A53 5G. There's a 12.2 megapixel ultra wide, 64 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel macro, and a five megapixel depth lens. Then you get two cameras on the back of a Pixel phone, 12.2 megapixel wide angle, and then 12 megapixel ultra wide. The front facing camera, you get an eight megapixel on the Pixel, 32 megapixel on the Galaxy phone, but then you get 4K 60 frames per second on the Pixel phone for video recording recording only 4K 30 frames per second on the A53. So you get higher resolution for the photos on the Galaxy, higher resolution for video recording on the Pixel. I'll show you a few samples of each, but to me, this one's real close. I might give the slight advantage to the Pixel phone, but it's really gonna come down to personal preference on which has the better cameras. So hopefully this video gave you a little closer look at these two more affordable phones by Google and Samsung. I've got a couple more comparisons for the 6A, so you'll definitely wanna look out for those. And of course, if you like tablets, I've got a lot more of those videos in the works as well. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.